Welcome back to another episode of the DAPS show. And um, I started a series on the principles outlined in Robert Greene's The 48 Laws of Power. So law number one has just been released, if you're listening to law number two, which is this episode here. And so what I'm doing is breaking down the different laws. There's 48 of them, so we're going to go through all of them. Uh, In between, there might be different episodes um, about different subject matters. But nonetheless, we're going to continue through every single law. And these are just nice short tidbits for anybody who hasn't um, had the opportunity or maybe not even have the time to read the book itself. This will give you a, a quick snapshot. These episodes will give you a quick snapshot of what the chapters or the laws are, are pertaining to. And, you know, you can kind of dive in a little bit deeper if you own the book and then see how you can apply it in different scenarios in your life, both personally and professionally. Right. So um, in this episode, again, we'll be discussing law number two. And law number two states to never put too much trust in friends and learn how to use enemies. It's very interesting, very powerful. Um, And I think this book in itself is one that is very similar to the art of war. I think everybody should have an understanding or at least come across it at some point on your journey. It'll really enlighten you in different ways. And also give you a a different perspective on different people that you might have in your life, right? Now, the law states that the more trustworthy friends you have, the less you can actually trust them. I'm not 100% sure I understand it myself. And so this is why we're putting it out there as well to see what you think of some of these laws and how they apply and so forth. I'd love to hear your opinion on them. And, but nonetheless, they are intriguing, right? The concept of if you have a lot of trustworthy people in your circle, the less you can actually trust them. Um, I'm assuming it's pertaining to um, different scenarios that you might encounter in your life. I'm assuming that based on what it is that you're going through, some of those people may not be around or they may not be the most reliable sources that you can count on. But I'm not going to dwell too much on that. But how can we use this principle in our daily lives and in today's society? So law number two is all about understanding the importance of self-reliance and not becoming too dependent on others. And I think once you have that concept and and a grasp of it, then you'll be able to appreciate what it said before about having too many trustworthy um, people in your circle. I guess if you're reliant on yourself majority of the time, then you don't have to depend on people um, as often. And because you're not dependent on others as often, you're not going to be disappointed as often. And you probably heard me say this before, right? So... It's about understanding the importance of self-reliance. It's also about understanding that friends can become complacent. And sometimes they will take your trust for granted while enemies keep you sharp, right? They keep you sharp and on your toes. Why? Because they're unpredictable and you know that they are not for you. So you have to be on your P's and Q's around them. Whereas uh, when you have friends, oftentimes They are for you. They're rooting for you so much so that they don't necessarily remind you that you have to keep driving forward. You have to keep pushing forward. You have to keep aspiring for more. Sometimes they get you to the state where you become complacent in your own drive that you don't think is necessary to want more or to try and achieve more. And they don't keep you on your toes as much. Right. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Now, I want to share a few examples with you in the business world. It can mean not becoming too reliant on one major client or partnership. And this is a lesson that obviously we all learn at different stages in our lives. And instead, diversifying your sources, 
uh, especially when it comes to income. So that's one aspect. In a political setting, it could mean not becoming too reliant on one political party or alliance and instead building your relationships with multiple groups, right? It's all about diversification. Now, real life examples I want to share with you are some folks that you have heard of. You don't necessarily know personally, neither do I, but we know just of their story enough to talk about or use them as an example. In the tech industry, you have Elon Musk, right? He has multiple companies. You have SpaceX, Tesla, and so forth, right? There's so many others that I'm not even aware of. And the newest, the new, uh, the latest acquisition, sorry, is uh, Twitter, right? But the two companies that I mentioned were initially heavily reliant on government contracts and funding, right? Trying to get you know certain things passed and funding to get this off the ground and so forth, but you know, as the companies have grown and become more successful, Musk has diversified his revenue streams and reduced his reliance on government contracts. And because he made that move, it's allowed him and the companies to become more sustainable, more successful, and, you know, they can actually sustain themselves for a longer period. Now, let's look at the entertainment industry. We're going to talk a little bit about the Queen Bee herself, right? Beyonce established herself as a solo artist after being in a member of the Destiny's Child. Now, a lot of you may not remember that group, but that was actually a really dope group, right? And I want to, you know, shout out to Wyclef for bringing us Destiny's Child there and, and whatnot. But this move of Beyonce becoming a solo artist allowed her to diversify her income streams and become more self-reliant. Has she remained in the group? And there's any turmoil within the group that would have kept her in that bubble as well, which means everything that the group endures would come to her, which means everything that she does would have to be split three, four ways, right? Obviously, you have to include managers and so forth. But this is what self-aligned is about too. Now, let's make a jump into the sports industry. Uh, Michael Jordan, we all know that name is synonymous with Jumpman, Airness, you know, name it, The Last Dance. So basketball was his thing, right? And he's known for obviously being brutally competitive. His spirit was just unmatched, never will be matched, I don't think. And he always sought to improve himself by competing against the best players, even if they were on the opposing team or even on his own team. No one got a break. Right. This drive to constantly improve himself and the willingness to compete against the best helped him become one of the greatest players of all time. Right. And that's what we, we debate about. The GOAT is not being dependent on you know, others so much. You become so self-reliant. You know what your limits are. You know what your capabilities are. And therefore, you can always propel into the next level that you want to achieve. Now, I just gave you some pretty decent examples, at least with memorable names <laughs> that you can at least always revert back to and, and check their story and, and so forth. Now, how do we use our enemies, Right. And how can it be beneficial for you in the personal and professional growth? And this is also important. And it's critical that you remember that this law doesn't mean that you shouldn't achieve, right? You shouldn't actively seek out enemies or um, you should. It's not saying that go and find your enemies so they can help you stay on your toes. No, nobody wants enemies, but they do exist. Right. We have to be um, cognizant of the fact that the more successful you become, the more of those enemies that you you obtain. And those enemies may not necessarily be external to your inner circle. Sometimes it brews from within and then it spreads out to the external right spaces. So just be aware of that. But you don't need to go out seeking enemies. Right. You just it's just a theory. Uh, a concept for you to understand that anyone could become an enemy depends on where you are in your journey to success. Now, the law is about understanding that sometimes healthy competition 
and different perspectives can push us to be better. It can also push us to achieve more. But don't forget that this law is about understanding the importance of being self-reliant. Not becoming too dependent on others. That's what it's about. It's also about understanding that sometimes it's the people we see as enemies who end up pushing us to our best selves. Right? We call those the haters. We call those the doubters, the naysayers, um, the gatekeepers, whatever you want to call them. But they, in fact, propel us to seek more and challenge ourselves and push ourselves to see the better version of, you know, the person that we are or want to become. So nonetheless, as many, you know, as many of us may have enemies or haters, you still need them. And it's important that you recognize them and let them know that you appreciate them for actually pushing you to become the version of yourself that you're satisfied with. So that's really what this law is trying to illustrate. That you can see yourself as someone that you can count on, that you can trust and depend on. Not so much the people or the resources that are external to you. A lot of the most powerful resources are coming from within. So allow yourself to tap into those and utilize it to your advantage. Now, I hope that you gain some value insight about law number two, which is never put too much trust in friends and learn how to use your enemies and how it can be applied in both your personal and professional settings. I want you to remember that by being self-reliant and not, you know, becoming too dependent on others, you can actually push yourself to the better self. I want to thank you for listening and tuning in every week. I hope you appreciated this this um, episode. And until next episode, love, peace, and nappiness.